It's time once again for the real people multi game solitaire mega tournament. We're going right back into it. Uh, Flush is actually, he's our leader this turn. Uh, in that he's the start player. Um, he's done two of two of his actions already uh, because we started off with production. His Japanese who really wants to produce and then he did trade in progress. Production was huge for the Japanese. I haven't done production with them for a while and they are getting a lot of money just really raking it in. Having these um, fertile areas gives you a lot more money and then also the Japanese are great at making cities in this game and so that just uh, and and flesh has really kept it sparse. He has no one he really needs to build up against, so he just just brought in a lot of money. Um, so very far ahead there. Portuguese had a pretty unsuccessful trade against the Spanish. Spanish killed him. Uh, the die roll ended up like this. Um, Portuguese had four dice. The Spanish had two uh, because giraffe is just kind of throwing away a card. So I was aiming. I've been aiming a little high, um, but. The, the Portuguese didn't get any attack dice, so Flush ba basically had to throw in the two dice for basically what would be an, uh, I keep saying basically, what would be an escape move in um, how we came to live here, uh, because that's, that's the best he could get. If he were to defend, um, then he would have to give up two dice on his next turn because he wouldn't be able to attack to end it. And so uh, he got there two dice and just lost some science out of it. Giraffe's Romans are also trading this turn, uh, and also with the Portuguese. So the Portuguese, Flush's Portuguese just traded with the Spanish. The Spanish won out despite a Portuguese ad uh, advantage, and now the Romans are going to be trading with the Portuguese. Why are, all, all, are they trading? Well, uh, the advan they both need advancement. So the Romans, if they can advance to here, they're going to score on all these wheat areas, which they have three... Um, yeah, they're sitting on three right now, and they could probably get Black Forest, and then eventually maybe overtake the Dutch, uh, if the if Runt even has the Dutch stick around uh, to get even uh, another point. So that's that's going to be an additional five points for the Romans, making them probably our top scoring empire. So if you look, they're having three. I think they're second place in in terms of artifacts, four, five, and then they'd have five more. They'd be scoring ten a turn. Uh, if she, just if she gets this trade off at all, because she's going to be an age five, which lets them uh, cultivate on that. Smart move to trade with the Portuguese, because she just traded with the Portuguese. Saw that didn't give her a too strong of a card. Um, I think he gave her a three or something, because Flush didn't have much in his hand. Flush wanted to advance so he could um, have access to these musketeers here. Um, or rifleman, and he got that despite losing some science. So here's the roll. Here's how it worked out. Romans have a big trade advantage. They they use a strong card. One reason Giraffe didn't give Flush a very strong card before. Uh, just to remind you, I know there's a lot of little systems in this game. Um, how a trade works is you trade cards, and you get a number of dice equal to the number on the card. You see how the cards have numbers up here, um, and then you get an, a bonus based on how many yellow cards you have, and then if you're Empire, like see the Romans here, they get an additional bonus. Um, Alright, so, so a lot here, so we'll just go ahead and run this out. Uh, that's a, uh, uh, Giraffe's Romans are going to attack first because they have more attack dice. Attack dice, neutral dice, defense dice here. So he's going to attack, he really ha doesn't have a lot of choices. Um, yeah, I guess he's going to just defend right there, so she gets a point, then it's his turn, he can either attack or do nothing, I think, um, he's going to attack, Draft's just going to defend, she's not really thinking too much about it, that's going to give him a point, she's going to attack, he can counterattack, and give her this, and then she has to do something, um, I think she is going to go ahead and, uh, she doesn't care that much, she's going to defend, give him the, the thing, and then he can't do anything, so he has to. Then she gets two points. So it's four to two. Typically, people use two to get rid of some stuff. She has two left, um, and she's gonna use that two to steal a gold mine. Uh, gold mine. It's an arrow one card, so it costs two to steal. It costs one to destroy. Um, and that's the trade. So now the Romans are gonna go forward two. Go ahead to fifth age. All of these wheat areas are now worth points to him. 
her and then the Portuguese will go up one. Now they both crossed ages so they lose their leaders unless they have a card that helps them keep their leaders. Dun, 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 dun. Nope. And he doesn't either so their leaders all die of old age and I can do that off camera. All right, we're going down to the maneuver phase, big maneuver phase for the English right now. If you recall last time they had a number of people here um, in South America, they've, they've just spread out. Uh, Melky hasn't been able to get the, have the English maneuver for several turns, so he had some boats at port that it was good to get those out as well. That's going to give allow him to score some more. Um, spread out in South America, I think that's going to give him, probably going to give him the outside of Europe dominance again, um, which Flush had in the New World there. Um, yeah, definitely. He's got five flush has four. Pretty simple math. Um, also, retaliatory strike against Scotland. Now, all of this is good for Milky, looks like. The retaliatory strike could not turn out well, but I'm pretty sure it will. I mean, the numbers are hugely in his favor. Um, but the English, one thing I want to point out is the English are heavily disordered. So if anyone uses, there are several effects in the deck that only can happen to disordered empires, like you could destroy all disordered areas, for example. If anyone does that to the English, that's going to be big trouble to them. Um, but still, overall positive, he's going to be scoring again, which will be good for Milky. So let's see. We got 8, 14, in the back line we got 9, 13, so 27, plus 1 for this, uh, the Scottish. They get six. This guy gets a bonus two because he's Scottish. Um, this guy only gets one, unfortunately. Seven plus five, that's 12. And then they're going to get a bonus three for being in the mountains. So I will roll that up and then get back to you. And a pretty easy obliteration of the Scots by Milky. Uh, they are gone. And now it's Cowboys, Plains Americans' turn to strike back. They're, they're striking here, here, and here. Last time they got attacked by the Portuguese, who um, were sent over due to the power of one of these cards here. Um, took a number of spaces from Cowboy and some very nice spaces. Those Plains areas are worth more money than the other areas. Uh, but they're, they're defensively less tenable. So let's do it. Uh, seven to three there. We'll just roll this right in front of you um, using my hand. There we go. And that looks like it's going to be pretty big uh, victory for Cowboy. Yeah, pretty easy. So for this next one, Cowboy is going to use this treachery card to just automatically win the fight. That um, is going to cause this guy to retreat. Now here's a case where Cowboy could have gamed it and um, made it so that things were better for him, but he did not do so. If he had done this fight first, it would have sealed off any any place for that guy to retreat, and he would have died. Uh, but he didn't do that, so now it's going to be six to three. Yep, and this is this one's going to be in Flush's favor. But he did like the idea of beating that big swordsman with this little spearsman. That was fun for him. All right, six to three. I'll just roll it up, and then I'll probably resolve it off camera. That's kind of easier for me. All right. And flush is the yellow this time. And no defense for cowboy, but looks like no attacking dice for flush. So flush is probably going to have to flip one. Um, which he can do. So Cowboy's going to attack first, do this, Flush will defend, and then he will, um, he's just going to discard these two in order to flip this to an attack, die, uh, attack back. He, cow or Cowboy can take away those two in order to roll a die. He doesn't have a die left to flip, so he can't flip it. He has to just roll and hope to get a defense die. And he does, so he's able to defend. But then, unfortunately, he doesn't have anything to attack with, so um, it's three to one. Not that bad. All right, so what does he want? He wants to get rid of that. And does he have anything else he wants to get rid of? I think he does. He's got two more, two more dice left. He might steal this tapestry. No, he can't, he can't steal it. He could get rid of the tapestry. Get rid of that. 
might steal this yellow card. Yeah, I think he'll steal this yellow card for the Portuguese. Lots of big fighting this turn. We have another uh, somewhat major attack here. The Sudanese are attacking Uganda, starting to chip away at uh, Runs mega pharaonic Egyptian, so they're no longer going to be the high scorer, right? We've established that the Romans are going to be the new uh, point masters. Um, still not as good of a position as maybe Africa, but Giraffe is doing something to change that. So right now we're looking at a 6, 10 to 2. Um, however, Runt was able to play this Mesmerizer card. Now normally when you you do combat in this game, you each draw a card to see, you know, sort of a randomizer to see how well you're doing. That got taken over by the die rolling for me, but this card kind of requires it. So I'm going to let them draw a card in this case. So here will be Runt's, well actually she, she gets to decide between two, the two. All right, so it's just going to give her a one die benefit because it's one and two there. See? All right, so I'll roll that up. And a tougher victory than I figured. I forgot to figure in, um, when I was talking before, the scientific advantage of Runt's Egyptians. And so it actually ended up being 9 to 6 for dice. But still, that was enough of an advantage for Giraffe's uh, Sudanese to, to take the cake. And the maneuver phase has ended. A very, very busy maneuver phase. We haven't had one of those in a while. I think everyone maneuvered with Runt's uh, Aztecs expanding. I think they, let's, let's count one. We don't count desert with them. Certain certain empires will count deserts, but most don't. And same with tundra spaces. Like the Finns can count tundra spaces for um, terms of glory and production and all that. But uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for the Aztecs and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're still tied. So that tie is going to go to the Plains Americans, which will be very good for Cowboy. He needs the points. Um, and But one thing that Runt is doing that other people aren't doing, and she's done this the whole game, she keeps going to the labyrinth, and that's that's scoring her points. So she got a point for... for um, both of her leaders going to the labyrinth, and they were both successful. And also, she's going to be scoring two at the end of this turn. She had been scoring one for being one ahead. No, one, two. Yeah, yeah, two. No, three. And the end of the turn saw the loss of two different empires, uh, both that just were stuck in one area. First, the mighty assassins. They were kind of fun for Melky to play with but in the end didn't pay off. That's really no surprise. Um, he could have maybe got something going. The culture definitely made it harder to do that though, uh, having to have more culture than other people because the people who tended to have leaders had higher culture than the assassins, so it was difficult. Um, who else left? The Dutch. I'm sorry, they, they just, they vacated the low countries maybe into the sea, into the North Sea there. Um, interesting scoring turn, uh, Flush used this card, Glory Pour Moi, no one's used this yet, um, actually got this in the, the trade from Giraffe, that's, that's how those Romans got such a, such a high amount of dice, um, large amount of dice, so anyone who has had lower culture, lower wreath score, than the Japanese was not able to score, so that, that took out the English and the early Finns. Melky didn't score at all that turn. Um, Cowboys, Plains Americans did not get to score. So Cowboy only scored two. Uh, Giraffe, she actually had a card that could have canceled it, but her Romans were still scoring 10, and her other two empires aren't doing that much right now. And the Pharaonic Egyptians were able to score. So pretty much it was just Flush, Runt, and Giraffe scoring this turn with Cowboy getting a measly two. That allowed Flush, he's catching up now. I mean, Two turns away, one turn. If I mean, if Cowboy has the the Phoenicians trade, then uh, you know all Flush's efforts are for naught. But we'll have to see next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Pope Leg Seven by Seven Ages.